Hello everyone, my name is Ivan, and today we're having a look at Zaps, a digitally controlled percussion line analog synth voice by Winter Plankton. Designed for creating organic sequences that can mutate over time, it uses a combination of techniques such as controlled randomness, morphing, and storing of synth voice parameters in the slots that can be externally sequenced. It packs a ton of functionality for just 24 HP worth of space, and for this reason this video will be split into episodes, so you can view them one at a time and come back to a specific section for recap if you ever need to. Without further ado, let's dive right in and see what makes it so special. So let's talk about the voice architecture of Zaps. The synth core consists of two analog VCOs over here, AM and through zero FM modulation, a two-channel mixer, a high-pass filter, and two digital envelopes. The analog generation and signal provides a sound free of aliasing and other digital artifacts, while the through zero FM allows to produce glass, metallic and rough sounds that keep the main VCO in tune. The real magic comes from the digital control. Retriggerable envelopes, sync of the VCO's wave to each of the trigger, auto-tune of the VCO's, lock of the parameters at each of the slots, morphing between sounds, randomization of any parameter, assignable CV inputs over here, and a file system where you can store and recall sound banks and projects. The combination of analog synth and digital control provides large doses of flexibility with great sound. Now let's have a look at the panel and see what each control does. Let's start by looking at this input and output section on the left side. On the top left we have a trigger input that can be used to trigger zaps. Then we have six assignable CV inputs that can also be outputs. You can assign them to any of the parameters on the zaps, but by default they assign to the accent for the first input, the second one will select the slots over here, the third one is the 1V proctive input, the fourth one is the random amount input that can be used to randomize all of the parameters, the fifth one is the release of the envelope, and the sixth one is actually an output. The way that the output works is that per each of the slots you can have a different voltage level between 0 to 5, 0 to 10 and minus 5 to plus 5 volts. And finally we have the audio output over here that goes in the range between the minus 4 and plus 4 volts. Next we have the oscillator section over here. As you already know these are two analog VCOs that are digitally controlled. Each of the oscillator has a coarse and fine-tuned control. The coarse goes in semitones which you can also see on the screen. So if I trigger this you can also adjust it with the encoder. And fine-tune goes in sense. The first VCO also has secondary controls such as the waveform selection and pulse width for the square wave. To access the secondary parameters we just press the layer button and now we can scroll through different waveforms starting from sine to triangle to saw to square, and the square has variable pulse. Similarly for the second VCO, let's bring it in with the second channel on the mixer over here. We have the coarse control that goes in semitones, and we have a fine-tuned control. Now the secondary parameters are slightly different. The first one is of course the FM wave selection which is the waveform going from sine to triangle to saw to square and then we have additional noise source over here. The FM wave is the waveform that is used to modulate the frequency of the VCO1 and it is also the waveform that goes to the second channel of the mixer. What's interesting is that now you also have the choice of the AM wave which is the waveform that is going to be used on the oscillator 2 to modulate the amplitude of the VCO1. To hear that effect, let's bring in the first oscillator. Let's switch the waveform to sine. And bring in AM modulation. Now we can start changing the AM wave by pressing the layer and adjusting the fine tune from sine, to triangle, to saw, to square, to noise. 
Additionally, the VCO1 can modulate the frequency of the VCO2, which is called the cross modulation. So let's bring in both of the oscillators to the mix. And put the cross mod slider up. Now let's have a look at this slider section. As you have already seen, most of the parameters have primary and secondary layer of controls, which can be accessed by pressing the layer button over here. Let's start by looking at this mixer section over here. The first slider is used to adjust the volume of the first VCO, let's hear that. The second slider is used to adjust the volume of the VCO2. And just to remind you, it is the FM wave that is going to the second channel of the mixer. The secondary parameter for the first channel of the mixer is the high pass filter for both of the channels. So let's hear how that sounds by setting both of the oscillators to some low frequency content. Then we can press the layer button and adjust the high pass filter. The secondary parameter for the second channel of the mixer is the high pass filter for the noise source that is produced by the VCO2. To hear how that sounds, let's first press layer, change the waveform of the oscillator 2 to noise. Let's hear it. Now we can press layer and adjust the secondary parameter. Moving on from the mixer section, we have two envelopes over here. Let's first have a look at the second envelope as it is used to control the main VCA of our voice. This is a three-stage envelope with attack, release and hold. Let's hear how that sounds. We can adjust the release to make really short sounds or very long. We can adjust the attack. adjust the hold by pressing the layer button and turning the release control. And the secondary parameter for the attack slider is called retrig. This parameter controls the time between each of the repetitions, which can be activated inside of the menu, and we'll check that out at the later stage. Let's move to these two sliders over here. The first one is used to adjust the amount of the envelope 1, which is exactly the same as the envelope 2, to affect the pitch of the VCO1. So to hear that, let's move this and adjust the release. And the second slider is used to adjust the amount of the envelope 2 affecting the pitch of the VCO2. To hear how that sounds, let's bring in the second oscillator in the mix. And turn the slider. Let's move on to the lower section of sliders. The first one is used to adjust the amount of the amplitude modulation of the second oscillator applied to the first one. So to hear that, let's mute the second oscillator. And turn the slider up. The second slider is used to adjust the amount of the FM modulation of the second oscillator to the first one. So let's hear that. The FM flavor can be changed by selecting a different waveform for the FM wave. Now let's check out the secondary controls for these two sliders that are used and modulated by the first envelope. The first one is the amount of the envelope 1 applied to the amplitude modulation amount. To hear how that sounds, let's turn on the layer 2, adjust this slider, 
And now we can start moving the decay, release, and attack to bring in the amplitude modulation. The secondary parameter for the second slider is the amount of the envelope 1 applied to the amount of the frequency modulation. To hear how that sounds, let's press layer and adjust the slider. Let's turn off the layer so we can adjust the attack and release of the first envelope. And by the way, the first envelope is identical to the second one where it also has a hold stage and retrigger time on the first slider. Next we have the cross modulation control, which is the amount of the VCO1 affecting the frequency of the VCO2. So let's turn both of the oscillators up and put the slider. And the secondary parameter for the cross mod slider is the morph. The morph parameter is used to transition from the currently selected slot to any other slot. To hear how that sounds, let's first hear our sound for the first slot. Then let's press layer and we can transition to slot 7 as you can see on the screen, which is a hi-hat. For just one slot, you can have all of this variation in between. And finally, we have the random slider, which is the amount of the random modulation that can affect any of the parameters on the panel. Let's hear how that sounds. Now let's move on to this right section over here with the screen and the buttons. The screen is used to show you the main controls, such as the tune of each of the oscillators, which slot you have selected, which bank you have selected, and which layer you have selected. Apart from that, it is used to show you the menus that can be accessed by pressing the function button and one of the slot keys. Talking about the slots, we have 12 of them over here, each of them containing a different parameter configuration for our engine. You can think of slots as parameter locks. On Zaps, you have 12 different projects. Each project can contain 12 different banks, and each bank can contain 12 different slots. Apart from being able to trigger different slots, you can also access the orange functions over here by pressing the function and pressing one of the slot keys. To exit, we can press function again, and we are back to our default view. The layer button is used to switch between the primary parameters written in white and the secondary parameters written in orange. The bank button has two uses. The first one is to select different banks by pressing the slot keys. And the second use changes the configuration of the slot button. So first, now we can trigger them. But if you would just like to edit them without triggering them, you just press function and bank. Now when I press a slot, you will not hear it, but you are able to edit them. This is particularly useful when you have a pattern playing and want to edit each slot individually without triggering it. Now that you know your way around the panel and understand the voice architecture, let's fire up a pattern from the Eloquencer and tweak the controls to consolidate our knowledge. We'll send the gate output from track 1 to the trig input and the pitch output to sequence different slots. Let's press play and start changing some of the banks over here. Let's press the bank button. We can start editing some of the steps. This is already super fun to play with, but it's only the beginning. In the next episodes, we'll check out the functionality of the 12 button slots over here that can be accessed by pressing the function key in one of the slots. 
And that is all for this video. We'll see you in the next episode.